ladies and gentlemen, filmmakers and moviegoers alike, welcome, I'm a little off-center, to Critic the Casual. I'm your host, Recuff, who's a little off-center, and joining me as always is Dorky Dev. Say hi, Dev. What up? Oh, nothing much. Life's going on, and we got some movies to review. Um, anything you want to say before we hop into our discussion today? These movies are trash. <laughs> oh, absolute garbage. Who would ever... No. <laughs> so, uh, today, nothing special. I couldn't get the graphic to work for some reason, even after re-rendering it, so I'm going to have to figure out what's wrong with my OBS then. But, uh, we're talking about the Dark Knight trilogy, and I called this a Dark Knight. Ha 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 ha, I'm so clever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure are, buddy. Thank you. There was a cat playing with a toy outside of my door, and it distracted me. All right, so we, we're talking about, of course, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. So, uh... And then we'll spoil all of them at the end. So, uh, shall we just, uh, get started, I guess? All right, cool. We're hopping on in here. We're getting very started. Right at the very beginning with, uh, you know, Batman Begins. Yeah. You want to do your... Super fun statistic things. Yeah. Uh, this aired. I forgot how old this movie was. <laughs> uh, this movie came out 15 years ago on June 15th, 2005. Um, which really puts things in perspective for a moment. Uh, with a budget of $150 million with a opening U.S. at $48 million, Gross U.S. at $206 million, And accumulated worldwide at $373 million. So, with that in mind, let's talk about this movie. I enjoyed this movie, but I have a couple of things that concern me. Uh, mainly being the convolutedness of the story, uh, at least in this one. Uh, only because I feel like... So, let me rephrase that. Um, I feel like this movie does one thing very well, and it has a very good transition of time from the beginning to the end. It's like... Of course, it has our little beginning exposition dump, and then we go into the modern movie, but it doesn't do, like, the whole 20 years later tech speech. And it doesn't, like, it all feels like one well-formed congruent timeline that goes from A to B. Um, to C to D to E. Um, which I enjoy. But uh, what I mean is that the some of the steps in between and how we get there is what throws me off. Like... I get that, uh, like, I, it's, I don't necessarily think it's, it's not necessarily a spoiler, but, like, um, this problem, this movie has a problem where it, it starts with one thing, and then it decides to do something else. Well, not necessarily a problem, but it very quickly runs up a ladder. I figured there'd be a little more stops on the way, like... I wasn't expecting a straight elevator, first floor to fifth floor. I was like, I was thinking there's going to be a first floor and we're going to stop at the second floor a little bit. And then we were going to go like, I felt like it kind of, at least until it got to the, 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 you know, the main point of the story. I felt the beginning went really quickly, even though this I movie... feel the complete opposite. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I feel like they, how do I explain this? Like, I feel, uh, like I said, the pa the way they wrote the story went fine, but I feel like that they very quickly went through some of the beginning stuff, which I guess is fine because we all we know the origin story of Batman, but then we just kept getting distracted almost, but not real. I don't know how to explain it. I'm just I feel like crazy. it took too long to get because you know who doesn't show up until about the forty minute mark. Who's that? Batman. Oh. <laughs> That's too long. But I'm sorry. But this That's is his origin. Long. So what? Batman Year One, animated movie, does this fantastically. Because of the entire time, like, you see the, like, the beginnings of, like, an, a, a proto bat suit, right? And stuff like that. Which you need that. I'm cool with that. Um, and we get that. But honestly, you know where this movie should have started? Where? At the plane with uh, Bruce meeting Alfred. Okay. Everything before that should be flashbacks. 
I mean, they, we could get away with it as flashbacks, but I wouldn't like it as much. Like, I I was actually kind of happy that we weren't really going through flashback storytelling, especially in the beginning. Like, I thought it was kind of interesting. We were flashing back every five minutes during it. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Yes, the story was told as him as an adult going back and, like, being as, like, he's explaining his childhood to Roz Elgable. That is yes, technically also, a flashback. Not just his childhood, but the stuff he was doing the months prior. Mm -hmm. Since the trial. The, I see that more as, at least in this instance, as like a parallel storytelling moment. Where they're telling, they're showing us what's happening in the childhood, and they're showing us what's happening as this one point in his adult life. And then they're both progressing in the story until we just get to his adult life. But you're where... missing the third timeline mm -hmm. that's happening during this. You're just focusing on the two, the childhood and the him getting to the temple, right? Okay. During this too, we're flashing back to him getting back to Gotham the first time mm -hmm. after Princeton. And there's the trial. There, That does happen, yes. But I, I guess I had that confused him when it happens because I figured that was before he showed. No, it was slightly after meeting Roz, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I, I felt like that was still just one timeline, I guess, because. But it's it, it, it's flashing back to that because he's with Roz. That in the end, I get. I. Because the trial stuff is before so, he leaves to go do the yeah. to understand the criminal underworld. So I, let me explain how I see this. Like, yes, the whole that whole series of events is technically a flashback, because at the end of the whole conversation, he is standing there talking to Roz. Yes, and he's like, "This is what happened. This is how I got here." And then they're like, "Ah, oh, blah 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 blah." And that's how he got into that prison in the beginning. No, he yes. got out of the prison. Before the first round of training. Yes. But he got into that prison because of the trial timeline. I don't... Because he explains that the trial happened, right? And he was going to do the thing. He gives up the coat. And then he goes into the criminal underworld. Without doing criminal stuff, he steals Wayne Tech stuff. And then he gets caught. And then he's in that jail. See, I didn't that's get... That's when Ray Ross finds it. That's exactly what happens. See, the timeline that I got was um he is in jail for the first time i yes but there is no explanation how he got there Roz yes. picks him up yes and then um he persuades him to do the thing to mr chill no this is on his own action before that okay that's all a flashback i feel because he's explaining to because if it was, he would have, Roz would have told him to kill him. Roz did tell him to kill him. He said, why didn't you kill him? Okay. He asked, why weren't you strong enough to kill him? Why didn't you take action? And then we get to see him there at the trial. Yeah, but he doesn't do it. Yeah. And that's him. That's him explaining that he didn't, that he didn't take action. See, I got that as him then taking action into his hands. No. Like that's not another flashback. That was a jump forward. No, that's another flashback. Okay. See, that that's... entire timeline is a flashback. Yeah, I got that as a jump forward because he was he still looked about the same to me, just a little more trained, I guess. I don't know. No, he wasn't trained. He he was younger. At okay. The time. So yeah, then I'm just wrong in this instance. That's all I got to say. You're right. <laughs> because I got it as this was the start and then he's progressing along the same timeline as his young himself. But if that's not the case, that's not the case and this is just a bad intro. <laughs> Again, why I think it takes too long. Okay, then you're cool. Because <laughs> if we're going to do flashbacks regardless, get to mm -hmm. Batman sooner. Okay. Like, I mean, I still is, that is my problem. I I hear you, but you still don't think it makes sense. Like, this is a two-hour long movie in the grand scheme. Well, it's actually. Hang on, let me double check. It's with two credits, hours and twenty minutes. Two, two hours and twenty minutes. So I'll say two hours and ten minutes long without credits. Yes. Um, yes. That is exactly how long it was. <laughs> do the D. All right. Um, so 40 minutes is still less than a 
third of the movie. I agree. But if I'm going to sit through two hours, I want to see Batman. I, I like it's my same problem with regardless of length. I want to see these the, 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 the character, the person okay. that we're here for. Mm-hmm. This is a Batman Begins movie. Mm-hmm. Give me a little bit of the begins. Like start like again, I think that'd be a good intro because of just getting to the plane. Mm-hmm. Because you have this air of mystery of, well, what's why is Bruce wearing all this stuff? And why does he look like this and all this? And then you sprinkle in the flashbacks when needed. Like, have Alfred bring up the chilled trial. Like, this is the first time you've been back since then. Piece that a little bit. Um, with him and Rachel talking, you could piece the, 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 the parents. And then, as, you know, he's doing Batmaning stuff, he flashes back to the training and pieces, like, pieces of his training that relate to the situation, what he needs to use. Theatrics or... Like being able to stealth into an environment, stuff like that. Like use bits of that to tell part of that story until you get towards the end of it, and then you get the reveal at the Wayne Manor. And you're saying this is all before he like fully dons up for the first time? No, 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 no. Okay. This is throughout the movie. He's donned up multiple times at this. Okay, point. then I would 100% disagree with you. Because I don't like the idea of multiple flashbacks throughout a movie. I feel like that will take you out of every single moment that you need to be into. Because it'll take you backwards in time rather than keeping you in the moment where you need to be in. Then cut the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> but Nolan's not going to do that. So we need to still have it in there. Mm-hmm. So, like, then I, I guess I would prefer it the way we got it then myself. I still, I don't like it because it takes forever for Batman to show up. Okay. I mean, that's a complaint you have with every superhero, at least recent superhero movies, because a lot of them. We've been watching lately, yes. I've been having that problem. Well, I mean, I had that problem with the Transformers. Mm -hmm. Those movies are god-awfully long, and it takes forever for a fucking Transformer to do Transformer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) TMNT, I had that problem a little bit with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but they did get to it pretty quick, like 20 minutes, Mm -hmm. Um, which is right on that cusp of where I'm like, okay. All right, especially if you're trying to, like, intrigue their introduction, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, Keaton Batman is introduced almost immediately in Batman 89. Mm-hmm. That's our intro to him. Why not do something like that? Uh, that's that's no such idea. a good intro. It, it immediately goes, yeah, that's fucking Batman. <laughs> immediately draws you in this one takes a while to like it takes 40 ish minutes this yeah this movie batman. is expects you to be here because they you know it's a batman movie like they yes. know you like batman so they expect you to sit there because you like batman they're not trying to draw you in to like batman for the first time but the problem with that is that it takes forever to do it okay that's my problem with this movie like Batman just needs to be there earlier. Okay. So we'll so we'll skip that. Well, we'll keep that in mind. Not skip it. We'll keep that in mind for now, and we'll move on. So so after the first forty minutes, Batman shows up. Which uh, so let's go past that first forty minutes now. Um, this is honestly the part where like like with the storytelling in the beginning, it's kind of where I get a little mixed up because it's like we go to chill to do this to do that to lead us to here. But then also, its interest is this, but then we have to do this. Uh, like, that's the reason why I don't... Like, that's my biggest complaint with this movie, because... It, like, I'll boil it down in a way that's not spoilers. It starts with Chill as our main conflict. Then it escalates to Falcone. Falcone. And then from there, it escalates even further. And from that escalation, it escalates one step further further and um it's all revolving around the city of gotham of course because batman and gotham are synonymous with each other but um i almost feel like i don't know i almost feel like this would be a better it'd be like this is batman's origin story yes but i also feel like this is a completely different origin story too like it's more gotham city's origin story but it's like it's hard to explain because once again i'm just bad with words today um it's like they just 
they go to places pretty quickly from one spot to the next. And yet... How do I explain what I'm trying to say? I'm crazy right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no idea what you're trying to say. No, I understand. Like... I just think I there's like too the much going on. I guess. I'll just boil it down and say, I think there's too much going on. Um, the escalation's fine. It's a natural story progression. We go from this place to this place to this place to this place. That's fine. That's kind of what you want in the movie. Because then it'll settle and um, resonate with people towards the end. But I feel like that there's too much going on for what we get. Um, this actually, this is a question I want to ask you because you constantly have a problem with, um, comic book stories, not keeping the, like, keeping to heart with the original or origin, like the, the source material. Well, keeping uh, the heart and understanding of why that character exists. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in Batman, the comic book version, he's considered the world's greatest detective. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you consider the him problem I have, like a detective? This is the closest we get to him being a detective because he is doing some detective <clears throat> stuff with Jim Gordon in this. Okay. But it's the closest we've gotten to Detective Batman. Okay. You would say that is this movie? Yes. Okay. I'm not saying it's great either. That's not me defending its detective work. Okay. But I, I will say it's the most detective work this Batman does. I, I actually have a moment I feel like he does a little bit more detective work, but that's not until the third movie. But it's literally just Are a brief Are you talking about moment. with the, the, the villains and stuff? No. It's how he identifies that one person. We'll talk about it when we get to the third movie. But, okay. like, in this oh. movie... Well, that's okay. That's different. Like that's detective that's, work. <laughs> but that's, it only happens once. Yeah, that's one literally does detective the... work too. Because he's he's <laughs> you know doing the um because the entire time it's about the chemical, right? And he's r trying to figure out the mystery around that. Um. Yes, and, and he's no. doing the work with that because he's you know he's investigating what this chemical is. He's like, I I understand this chemical. I've been around it, I believe, mm -hmm. and starts to investigate the leads through that. Through the crime organization and stuff like that. That's why I feel it's the most detective work. Is it what Batman's normal detective work would be? No. This is a little bit more like cop Batman, I would say. <laughs> like a beat cop Batman. Emphasis on um, beat. <laughs> a little bit. Um, <laughs> the good, that's which the is point. why um, I think it's the one with the most detective work. Because he's actually do he's investigating the connections between these people. The chemical compound and what it's what's going to happen there and trying to get all the information as to why they're doing this stuff like by when they're doing the whole uh the stuff involving the water he doesn't understand why he's trying to find that last piece but he's 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 got all the leads here but he's wondering what's this like what's this two, these two gaps in the center because okay. he knows that someone's he knows someone's supposedly back mm -hmm. but he doesn't know how um and he knows that there's something planned with the water but he doesn't know what the plan is fully. He has all the pieces to it. He just needs that pin to rope around. He doesn't have the pin yet. Okay. I can see and, it when you explain it that way. Yeah. Okay. Like he's, he's been putting these pieces together. He just needs two pieces left to figure out what's actually happening. And at the party is when he gets both those pieces and the puzzles made and he understands everything that's been planned. Okay. Because the way I saw this movie, was not really a detective work at all. It was very thrilling and exciting, but the one who does most of the mind work is Mr. Fox. Like, he does the technical. He, like, does... Yeah, well, technically, yes, but at the same time, most of what Batman does in this movie is technical. Like, he's running away from cops, and he's not the one who's navigating. It's the computer that we flash to two or three separate times. It's like, take this path. It's like, well, that's not Batman being smart. That's the computer being smart for Batman. And, like... Okay, all right. <laughs> you wouldn't use a GPS if you had the option to when you're trying to, like... Because what do you... What if... what? Okay. 
what that GPS probably has integrated into is least amount of traffic, least amount of lights, easiest pl places to turn off and hide. There's probably other things that are programmed into that that you aren't going to always know. No, yeah, I like I understand that, but now we're getting into the like. See, and you would want that technically programmed to do that. But that's semantics that we'd be arguing at that point. Like, and you're, you're arguing a semantic! <laughs> not that specific, though. Like... I know, but then why are you arguing about a GPS? That Because the reason I'm arguing about that is he's supposed to be, like, the world's greatest detective. The world's smartest man, essentially. And, what is and the fuck is <laughs> he's not the one who's figuring out the stuff. He's allowing something else to be smart for him. He's not proving that he's smart. In that instance, that's what I I'm trying to get okay, at. In that moment, yes, <laughs> but like, <laughs> this is also supposed to be more grounded. Was Nolan's approach? Mm -hmm. I get that. This is supposed to be the grounded Batman, yes. And there's definitely some <laughs> grounded moments in here for sure. Like, oh, there's quite a lot of grounded moments in here, actually. Let me rephrase that. But um, it's just. <laughs> This is definitely a very real and gritty take on Batman, especially compared to other ones we've had in the past. But, um... I, just, I don't see how that's a problem that he has a GPS. Like, the it's other just Batman a lot of Batman I mean, in the comics has GPS! I'm not saying that him having the GPS is a bad thing. Like, everyone in real life uses a GPS, yes. What I'm getting at is it's not showing how smart he is. Like... It's showing that he can get technology to help him look smart, but it's not showing that he himself is a genius, which is what I'm trying to get. <laughs> like, that's a lot of this movie is he get he's like, I have this idea. Well, here's the supply to do said idea. Well, I have this other idea. Well, here's the equipment you need to do that. Not, hey, I'm Batman and I will develop this to do that. He doesn't do that until... I think he does that a little bit in movie two and he does most, of, he does a little more in movie. Th nah, he doesn't do really any of it in movie three. Uh, <laughs> he does, he does the, one of the most critical ones in movie three. Um, Was that the, the well, I might be getting them a little bit mixed up. Which one is which? Which forensic scene um, I'm thinking of, but <laughs> I'm not talking about forensics. I'm talking about just smarts. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also talking about on, like, in this, in this movie, he shows his smarts by being able to piece these things together. Like, he's able to, like, understand, um, like, he, he's able to understand how to use all this equipment, for one. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a lot of crazy equipment that you have to be able to perfect using. Like, a grapple hook, okay? Seems easy. <coughs> But that shit that he does with the grab hook would not be easy. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> like, his, his situational awareness, his ability to understand what's actually happening around him, and his, um... Like, I feel like that stuff... Tactician. That makes him look like a really good fighter. Like, he's a smart fighter, yes. But he's not a smart... Like, he's not a genius, is what I'm getting at. Like, when I think, at least in the movie adaptations that I've seen, I would say Tony Stark is a genius. I would not yes. say Batman is a genius. No, and I'm not saying he is. That doesn't have to be a core principle to Batman, though. Okay. There's been other great Batman adaptations that don't make him a genius. Okay. I.e. Batman, you're one. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have him technically be a genius the entire time. He's trying to take down the uh, Falcone crime mm -hmm. syndicate, a little syndicate, and he gets access to this technology through Lucius Fox mm -hmm. and understands how to use it and uses it well to get through these situations. You know, the, the genius comes over time, mm -hmm. too, of understanding how to do the job. And getting better at it and working more with your equipment and stuff like that. Okay. And finding tweaks that you do with your equipment that maybe wasn't programmed in there. So you're like, so you're saying that it's okay for him to slowly learn and develop. Yes. However, you're also saying that this movie has him show up and be Batman too slowly. 
Well, yes. But uh, well, I, okay, I, because you can be, you can be Batman mm -hmm. and still be developing as Batman. Okay. There's a difference between that. Okay. Like, you're you're what you're arguing isn't what I'm arguing right now. Okay. I'm just trying to clarify. I didn't think I needed to clarify that. Like, he can be Batman and still be a developing Batman mm -hmm. towards the beginning of the movie. Okay. Because that's how most of them do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just that you don't need Batman to be a genius right off the bat. Because if you do, you take a little bit away from the development of that character. Mm -hmm. That's one of the problems with New 52 Batman. He's so stale in the uh, animated universe that we watched a lot mm -hmm. of, he's very stale. Um, and it just, it gets, my opinion, throughout that series, it just gets worse. He's, ex he's boring in that. This Batman isn't perfect. He's flawed. He's still learning. There's stuff to, in to understand there, mm -hmm. to learn there, to uh, like get to appreciate this character more. That's why. Okay. I like this Batman. Okay. So let's see. I mean, I have nothing else to talk about really when it comes to storytelling. Um, I do. Okay. I have some problems with the fight scenes. Okay. I was about to say, that's like, cinematography. <laughs> too much, uh, too cutty early on. Yes. I would agree with that. The story, uh, the, uh, this first movie had a really good, hard time of keeping track of what's going on with the fights. There was, I had talked about this with my dad, actually, because I watched the first movie with him. And I was like, do you see this fight here? This is swing, cut, hit, cut, react, swing, cut, react, cut, swing, react, cut. And like, it was never swing and reaction in the same take until towards the very end of the fights when the guy is already on the ground and Batman just hits him one more time just because. Like... Uh, so I 100% yeah. agree with you with that. The The cinematography in this movie was not the best. Like, there are some pretty interesting moments, and it has a lot of visually, like, appealing stuff when it comes to the wide shots, like its design of Gotham City and the aesthetic of the city as a whole. But, the like, the action scenes, not so good. At least not in the beginning of the movie. Maybe a little bit more at the end. And I feel like that's a director choice. Because it's supposed to be kind of like, as you say, Batman's not really Batman yet. He's kind of getting along the best he can, and it's kind of a mess at first. And then later on, as he gets more into the swing of things, it's... Uh... I also get some of it because you're trying to hide, um, like, Batman a little bit towards, like, that first one with the, uh, at the docks. Mm -hmm. like, like, it's the first time you really get Batman. Mm-hmm. I, there's actually one thing that I wish they did was in that first fight. Well, what are the first fights? There's a scene where he's taking on like five or six people and he's in his Batman suit. I don't think it's at the docks. I think it's just after, but I can't remember specifically. It's the one before probably. Um, probably, yeah. He's fighting and um, he argues uh, uh, like he's fighting. He does his thing, but it has a whole bunch of jump cuts. And it's not until the second movie which we'll talk about here in a little bit, uh, he gets a suit that he has specifically made to move better in. But we don't really get to see him having movement problems in this movie to make that a reason. Like, don't get me wrong. We do kind of get to see that he can't turn his neck a little bit. But in comparison to other movies where the guy has to go, Huh? What? <laughs> Who? Like... He can move, he has so a pretty decent amount of mobility. So we don't get to see what he's complaining about later on until uh he gets I mean I see it, but at the same time I'm looking for that because I know about this movie's lore and stuff like that. See um I like I was I thought about this recently. I was like I like I'm bored watching comic book movies sometimes because I feel like in the movie format they're pretty similar. I couldn't imagine Watching comic book movies as I am now, but also knowing about the comic book or origins, because it'd be like, oh, that Bucky guy, yeah, he dies eventually, or does he? Ho ho! Like that would completely ruin some of the surprises <laughs> when I would be first watching these movies, and 
that's what I, I enjoy about I'm the movies. I'm fine with it. <laughs> I'm fine with knowing everything, bro, because it gives me the moment to be like, hey, it gives me the moment to be surprised when they do twists, like the Mandalore, mm-hmm. and, uh, or the Mandalore, or the damn it, Mandalore. Uh, the Mandarin. The Mandarin. <laughs> yes. Other. Animals. Someone's excited um, for a show coming out soon. Next month, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> I haven't even thought about it all day until like trying to say uh, the um, exactly. uh, Mandarin. Um, I had to really think for a second. <laughs> um, but like um, with him, that surprise came out of nowhere for me. Mm. And that's that's awesome in my opinion because you're surprising the audience with stuff like that. But um, a bunch of the comic book fans hated that he wasn't the real Mandarin or was he? Well, he wasn't. No, I, I was him not being the real Mandarin. That's a twist. That's a good twist because that surprises audiences. Mm-hmm. Um, Baron Zemo not being Baron Zemo. Um, good twist. Good change. Like the character still feels true enough to what the character is while still changing it enough in a way that surprises audiences that know the characters. Shit. Fucking Infinity War Endgame. We didn't expect that. Mm-hmm. But they did it. I was actually thinking about Endgame recently only because I thought about Thanos because Thanos and Infinity War, extremely complex. Thanos and Endgame, not as complex. It doesn't need to be complex in that. No, I hear you. But, But they did simplify him a little bit. They like... And the reason why, same reason why I don't like what they did to the heroes is that he kind of, they made him a little more one-linery. I mean, he's not literally a one-liner like some of the other characters were. But they can- weren't one-liners <laughs> in Infinity War. I really hate you saying that. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> Stop it then, because they're not. But that's just my opinion. It's wrong. <laughs> hey, I don't say your. Opi- I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't Bullshit. even say that with a straight face. Yeah. <laughs> um. <sighs> we need to hurry up. We got three movies. Yeah, we're only in the first one. So the last thing I wanted to talk about in this movie was I liked pr- their use of practical practicality when it came to the effects, especially their use of miniatures when it came to the Batmobile. I thought that was pretty adorable. Um, it reminded me a lot of. Star Wars. I know, like, I know it's not what they were emulating, but I liked it. I, it was like, you could always kind of tell when they're doing a miniature shot because things look just slightly different. But still, I thought it was cool to see them that they actually did it practically rather than using CG effects. So, there's that. Um, oh, <laughs> the last note I wrote on this paper, which you're going to hate is Batman is smart enough to have a tool for everything. And that's about it. (laughs) (sighs) So, I guess, is there anything else we want to talk about in this Batman Begins specifically before we hop into the next movie? Not really. Do we want to talk about how Christian Bale couldn't decide his Batman voice yet? How it kept kind of changing throughout all of them. Well, that's a topic I'll get to later. Okay. <laughs> because I think in this movie, it's the best. Okay. Like I both, ag- I kind of agree because it definitely sounds more human compared to <laughs> that he gets to in the third movie. Cause in the third movie, he doesn't sound good at all. Um, no, I hate it by the third movie. Yeah. The third movie, he sounds just awful. Um, uh, but in this, in this movie, he literally goes through like two or three different accents just in this movie. It's part of his, tr- it's part of learning to be Batman. <laughs> and two, the other thing, you can understand everything he's saying. That's true. It just really made me think of, uh, Bad Bat or Bad Man or whatever the hell it was called. The college humor skits when he was doing the, I'm Batman. And he's going through all the different voices for the first one. Well, no, in this one, I think it works fine because, I mean, he also changes his voice occasionally when he's stressed out in the situation with, like, Rachel or something. Hmm. Um, I think it's the best of it because it's gruff enough that it doesn't sound like him enough because it's, like, 
Hi, I'm Bruce Wayne. And then, I'm Batman. Hello. Welcome to the Batcave. Like, that works. You can understand him. Mm -hmm. Wow. In later movies, it's, Hi, I'm Bruce Wayne. Hi, I'm Batman. It, it, like, it. I'm listening. I'm the one. I was about to say, there's a bit of a fat lip that you're missing in there. I'm the one that got the mouth. <laughs> sounds like Nixon. <laughs> it slowly becomes more Nixon-y. <laughs> so, okay, we'll talk about that a little bit more, especially in spoilers. Um, oh, eh. Hmm. What do you feel about how they treated Brain? Because I feel like he was a bit of a letdown. By a bit bro. Huh? What more do you want from him? A resolution at the end of the film. They solve that later. You can't have all your resolutions if you want a sequel. Okay, I got one one thing to talk about in this: the whitewashing. Whitewashing. Okay. Yes. I thought you were going to talk Ra's about Ghoul. the sequel baiting, but... <laughs> no, Ra's al Ghul's whitewashing. Okay, yeah. He's not even called, in this movie, I was looking at IMDb, he's called Ducard. He's not Ra's al Ghul. Well, it's because they were trying to keep the spoiler. Hmm. Ken Watanabe is Ra's al Ghul. Yes, but he's not. I do enjoy me some Ken Watanabe. Yes, okay, right. but yeah. I'm, I'm not... No, I hear you what you're, you're talking you're, about. Yeah. You're trying to deflect something that isn't actually deflectable here. No, okay? I know, I know, I know. Go ahead. No, stop. You're going to piss me off more. Because they whitewashed... Ra's al Ghul. Which I just... I don't like. It's the same problem we had with uh, whitewashing the uh, ancient one. I guess... In the comic books... What is Ra... What ethnicity is Ra? He's Arabian. Arabian? Okay. Yes. Because in this movie, they explain it as Ra's al Ghul just being a mercenary for hire, and they never really explain where he's from. So, yeah. So, like, I guess, like, in the source material, it makes sense. It's just in this movie, like, in this franchise, it's not explained in any way where he's from. So it's like, oh, where's he supposed to be? Like, the ethnicity didn't seem like it mattered. I guess. But no, I understand it doesn't. You, like, I understand what you mean because we had this conversation last week about um, representation yeah. in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So this is another role that could have gone to someone else who is of the ethnicity, ethnicity of, of the character's background in the source material. Mm-hmm. That's my problem with it. Okay. I think we like I think that Liam Neeson is great in the role, mm -hmm. but that doesn't excuse it. Okay. That's my point. Alright. I can appreciate that. I mean I have nothing else to say about it. So. <laughs> Rating. Ratings? Popcorn sure. What's your here are your ten kernels? How many? Nine. Nine? Nine. After all of that, you give it a nine still? I mean, I, I think it's the best Batman story, story start. Okay. Because I was going to give this a seven and a half. Why so low? Because I feel like it's a good movie. It's very entertaining. It's a little long. I feel like it's a little jumbled in what it's trying to do with its story. And I feel like technically which is kind of a little bit more what i was aiming for i'll be honest other movies do it better like for instance let's talk about the movie that i enjoyed the most out of all of these the dark knight do you even want to talk about the the average score real quick <sighs> oh, uh, 8.5 <laughs> all right there we go we talked about it. let's move i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah so 8.5 is the average nine and yes. seven and a half yeah yeah, yeah. math yeah, that seems right. I'm not really good at math. But yeah, eight and a half. Not bad. Could be better. I mean, I can say that about all three of these. No, yeah, that's a hundred. I say that literally about every single movie we watch. Like, not bad. Could be better. 
You haven't given a single movie a 10 this year. No, we have not. Because they all could be better. <laughs> so, uh... I'm the Lord of the Rings. What is wrong with you? I'm... I don't know. I should probably see a therapist. Yes! <laughs> Psychologist. Whatever they're called. The Dark Knight. Um, released July 18th, 2008. I didn't realize how long ago this movie came out, by the way. Um... Wow. Budget of 185 million, opening US of 158 million, gross US of 535 million, and worldwide of 1 billion. I think it was the first superhero movie to break the billion. Hmm. Because I don't think Iron Man broke billion. Let me double check this real quick. Um, Iron Man. Let me double check this real quick. No worries. Sorry, I'm. I was reading because no, Iron Man only made uh half a million, a little under half, or a little over half. Sorry. Um, and it came out the same year. I was just trying to figure out who this writer was. Um, writer Jonathan Nolan worked on this movie with writer Christopher Nolan. Yeah. How are they related? I'm. I can't find it. I don't think they are. I think it's his son, if I remember correctly. Okay. I mean, I have no idea. I can't. I'm not going to dig into it. That's not the topic of today's show. It's the Dark Knight. <laughs> yes. So, um, I like this movie. Technically, like, the like main reasons why I enjoy this movie, 100% is Heath Ledger. And then yes. the energy that they use and play off with him when it comes to the cinematography and the sound editing and even the like the fighting and stuff is so much better. The action scenes are better. Um in this movie they do switch to a few uh more CG rather than practical effects and I could definitely tell that some of this was CG. Like it's aged a tiny bit but it's still good especially when it comes to Two-Face. So like there's a lot in this movie that I enjoy, but there's also things in this movie that I don't enjoy. Like, uh, for instance, starting off from the very beginning, I liked, um, the slow, not, sorry, let me rephrase that. I liked the introduction to the Joker. How, they show him as coming off as kind of like this organized means to a chaotic end, really. But they don't show the chaotic part until later on. In the very beginning, he's very organized, and he just walks differently than everyone else. And then from that point on, things change. And like just the whole movie is, I feel like, a step up when it comes to like, the actors who they chose for each role, um, and just what they've done. I just like this movie more. <laughs> Plain and simple. Yeah? Yeah. Like, uh, some of the scenes that stick out for me, for instance, would be, um, like, I sent you a Snapchat, I believe, of when we get to meet the Joker talking to Rachel. Yeah. Which, um, one of my f- absolute, I think that is actually my favorite scene in the movie. Uh, only because you can feel the tension and it's super cool. And, um, oh, that's one thing I wanted to talk about in the last movie, and I didn't. Um, Rachel being played by a different person. Yeah. I wonder if, how'd you feel? Like, between the two actresses, do you have a preference between the two? Between Maggie Joan Hall and, uh, at Holmes? Yeah. I think they both do fine in the role. Okay. Because the I feel like Maggie Gyllenhaal did it was a better fit only because I think Kate Holmes is a little too nice. Like there's something about her she wasn't typecasted enough for this role. <laughs> she doesn't have enough of a resting bitch face. She looks too happy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Bro, what? Like, uh, it's hard for me to explain other than, like, she didn't quite fit the demeanor of, to me, of a DA who was there to try and clean up the city. While Maggie Gyllenhaal, even though we didn't get to see that part of her character at all in this movie, uh, of the Rachel character, like, being that badass DA who's out to save the world, like, we didn't get to see that from her, I feel like that Maggie Gyllenhaal probably could have done that better. But we don't see that, so you can't compare I can't, that. I can't guarantee it, but I definitely didn't feel... I think they're both Hamm's about was... equal, in my opinion. Okay. If they, if they were both in the survived other... <laughs> their movies, perfectly fine. Yeah, totally fine. But what I'm not okay with, mm -hmm. and why this movie gets hold, held back for me, is mm -hmm. that Batman just fights. Mm -hmm. This one's definitely Batman is not smart. He is not a like a solver of things. He lets the Joker get into his head. And there is no, like... Brick. I wouldn't say he's not smart. He has one of the smartest mo moments in the movie. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying he does zero detective. Mm -hmm. Name yeah. a part where he detectives. He doesn't. I mean, I'll, it says the, the moment that I wrote down here, whereas the closest he gets to a detective scene is when he does the bullet analysis. Um... Which I don't think ha works at all in real life, but no, that was some bullshittery. Yeah, but you know that's the closest we got. He does to... it himself. That's true. And Alfred said you couldn't design this thing any quieter, could you, Master Way? Like, because it was a loud design. But whatever. That was the one time we get to see him doing something kind of smart. I also have immediately under that, underneath that. Uh, Fox is the one who's the smart one in this movie. <laughs> well, no, he does something else smart in this movie. He uses something that Fox creates and makes it in a depth crazy. Mm -hmm. That takes a, a a high intellect to do that. What he did, he just got a contract with the government. It's okay. Still. <laughs> That takes to, to do what essentially to expand upon one idea mm -hmm. to that scale is nuts. Mm -hmm. So, like, that does take an intellect, right? Like, there. like I agree with you in a way because he did it himself, yes. And the reason he did it himself is because the inventor. Didn't like what he did with it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and understandably, he did it in, in the shadows and set it up. But, like, that does take someone being really smart to do. Mm -hmm. Like, he set it up ahead of time. The argument is about his, isn't about his smarts. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because mm -hmm. he's still plenty smart, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The problem comes... From him not doing detective work. Mm -hmm. And you, an, go ahead. I was about to say, do you think that has anything to do with how they portrayed the Joker in this movie? Like that should mean more detective work. The it says literally the tagline for this movie is "Welcome to a world without rules," like. Yeah. How I, I understand what you're getting at. That, like, there should be him showing out how he figures out what the Joker does. But, and he never really figures out what the Joker does in this movie. So, like, he just, like, he uses the technology that Fox made uh, to find where the Joker is before the Joker can enact his plan. But that's not stopping the Joker from doing the plan in the first place, essentially. So, well, I don't need him to stop Joker from doing the plan. I'm not talking about figuring out the plan as his detective work, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, what would you have liked him to have done, I guess, in this movie? And in, this doesn't have to be resolved, okay? <laughs> okay. But investigate who the Joker is. Okay. Yeah, but 
they give us an end movie explanation that they have no way of figuring out who he is. Like he is on no government record anywhere. Yes. And he has no identification. The police do that. (laughs) The police do that. Mm -hmm. I will reiterate. Yes, that the police do it. The police do it. Okay. Like, you know what that could have been mm-hmm. instead? Mm-hmm. Could have been Batman doing that. Mm-hmm. Showing off his detective work. But in the comics, doesn't Batman still not know who the Joker is? Don't th- doesn't he yes. never figure it out? I mean, he's figured it out. Well, I, I, I know in one figure. timeline there's three Jokers. But... Well, that's this one probably. Okay. Um. Because but he no, sits talking... in a super chair and he learns yes. the secrets of the universe. And... Yes. <laughs> the Morbius chair. Yes. You're getting at the right thing. But he didn't figure it out. He wasn't able to figure it out. The Joker's identity was nearly impossible to figure out. Hmm. Because he lies a lot. Which this Joker does everything that the Joker is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. The Joker is perfect in this, in my yes. opinion. Lies about his origin. Has hidden his, uh, his secret as far away as possible. Okay. Is chaos incarnate? Is the clown prince a cr- crime? Mm-hmm. His group is a bunch of followers who are just following him because he's chaotic. That is what they sh- it should be. He is perfect, in my opinion. Okay. Batman doesn't live up to what Batman should be doing with the Joker. Okay. Because even Michael Keaton against the Joker investigated how he was alive, who he is. Figured out stuff. He brought up, he bought, he found a fucking dossier on Jack Nicholson's character. Mm. So he you, investigated it. Okay. So I guess I mean, like the problem I had with the last movie is that one, what some there's no resolution with one character until this movie. Um, yes. And you're sus- you're offering something that would never get resolution in the movies. And like it could theoretically maybe in the third movie, but it doesn't need a resolution. Not everything needs a resolution. I feel like if it's brought up in a movie, it has to have a resolution. Like because movies are different form of medium than like comic books and novels and things like that. No movie will ever get that done. Right. Like that's the problem. Yeah. No movie could, I mean, you're always going to have a loose end. Mm-hmm. Okay. My, my counter to you right now is making it so, like, show Batman investigating Crane at the beginning, right? And actually mm-hmm. doing detective work to figure out where he is, what his plan is, and all that. Instead of just the drop-in, okay? Mm-hmm. That'd be a cool intro, right? Show that he's actually been doing detective work, he's been learning the game, and getting better at it. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's actually Maybe. something I wanted to talk about too, because this movie supposedly takes place how long after the last movie? Like months, maybe? A year or two. Okay. Because in the next movie, it's eight years after this movie ends. But um, there's a end of the movie, like cliffhanger with Batman Begins for the Joker for this movie. And then the Joker is this movie's ba- villain. And Crane is still on the loose, so we don't know how much time has passed. So, like... I guess... How much time (laughs) has passed between... Who has the answer? That man begins and the Dark Knight. Five years. Five years, okay. Yeah, so they don't really portray Batman in a great light because it takes him five years to catch Scarecrow. Okay, <laughs> you want to hear how I can improve that start? Sure. Have Bruce at the comp- at a computer in the Batcave. Mm-hmm. Actually, use the Batcave in this movie. Mm-hmm. That's one of my other complaints. It's been five years. Why don't we have a Batcave? Because <laughs> Wayne Manor is still under construction. That's a problem I have with this movie. They say that in this movie, that Didn't Manor this... is still under construction. I thought... This... Yes. Yes. I'm getting my movies mixed up. <laughs> I thought it was at this movie when they burned down the Manor. 
But no, that was the last movie. Okay, yeah. At the party. Been five years. That's right. I remember now. Okay. They're still working on the supports, the foundation, and the southeast wing. Give me a back cave. <laughs> I want back cave. <laughs> Give me back cave. We got pseudo back caves. I don't care. Those are other locations, not the back cave. That could be like the the um the bell tower, something like that. I I I feel like we're gonna run into a problem because I I keep hearing that you want everything from the comic books, like. You want the, the good origin with Batman early okay, on in the I'm movies trying, with the yeah, Batcave. Okay, but I feel yes. like we're going to eventually run into the problem where we'll get like a solo where we get in one event. We have every single thing that he's famous for. Oh, no, that's not what I'm trying to get at. Okay. The first one doesn't because the first one sets up the Batcave. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a sequel. Mm -hmm. You set up Batcave. Mm -hmm. Why no Batcave in sequel? Because... Why they, set it up? Because they're still explaining that they're building the mansion. It's been five years! Then it's a fucking mansion! <laughs> then use the under construction mansion! <laughs> it's still a more interesting thing than a penthouse and a crate with a bunch of lights. But the crate has a sinking floor. It's still more interesting! And plus, isn't that crate, like, important because it's the same location as episode... Is the no, thing in different, movie okay, different, 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 different location. Okay. The other one's not in a crate. It's in a building of um, like a portable building. Yeah. For construction sites. Mm -hmm. Again, why have problems with this? Mm -hmm. Cause you want to, how you can start this movie. Mm -hmm. Have Batman sitting there at the bat computer in the bat cave. Mm -hmm. Finally nailing down where Crane's next big deal is. Cause let's say that he's gotten multiple, like this, like, Kind of set it up as, you know, Alfred walks in and is like, oh, Crane. Well, let's see if you can get him this time kind of thing. Which means there's been previous moments of those two getting going against each other. Which is fine, in my opinion, of him not always succeeding in getting Crane. Because Crane is one of the bigger bad guys in the Batman lore. Mm -hmm. It'd be understandable for him to get away. Because he would have an escape plan. So, we have the suit pop up. We don't see it, though, right away. It's at an angle where you don't see the suit. Okay? Mm-hmm. You cut to the Batmobile driving off, and then you cut to the scene where the movie starts with Crane and the deal. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Set that up. Set up that he's been doing more detective work. That Crane has been on the loose for five years, and Batman has gotten close to catching him, and this is the big break moment. Mm -hmm. So would you? where would you put that? Would you put that before Joker's scene or after Joker's scene? Because the movie starts with Joker robbing the bank. I would put it before the robbery and have the robbery be the next day. That's the big thing that happens. And that's how, like, like that's mm -hmm. the big introduction of that character. Okay. Because, like, because now that I know I, that I, it's... I don't, I don't think that intro should, like, that, that is the, the problem. Like, I, I still, that intro is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the intro for Batman suffers because of it. Well, yeah, I have a bunch of things that I worry about now because if this is canonically five years later, I have a bunch of questions. Like, uh, obviously the Bat Cave is not built or anything, but it, Detective Gordon's talking about the Joker five years ago, and now nothing happens between then and now, even though five years ago the Joker was well, starting to become he's been popular. doing like all yeah. uh, hits on the uh, the mob, mm -hmm. which and, wouldn't put him necessarily on Batman's main mm -hmm. major radar. Same thing goes to, it's been five years that Crane's been loose, but as far as we know in the movies, Crane's supplier was Ra's al Ghul, but Ra's al Ghul's dead. So who's his supplier now for his fear toxin? He just, he just gets someone else. So, like, see, these are things, like, this is the kind of the problem that I have when I get well, into my questions, years. is you have an explanation so for these hypotheticals that there is no answer for. <laughs> I know, but you just have to let the movie movie occasionally. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, and that's a hypothetical. Like, a supplier, you just got to assume that he got someone else to supply it. Because he knows where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. I was always under the impression that this was immediately after. Like, this was maybe a year later. No. Like, he's had time to develop. And the Joker was our stinger. So, of course, he's not after him right away. He hasn't really done anything super major quite yet to have him on his radar. So, 
Like, now that there's a larger time gap, like, the problem that I've had with the Dark Knight trilogy was the fact that he's not the world's greatest detective. He's a fantastic brawler, and occasionally he figures things out. Um... Well, he figures things out every time because that's how movies work. But uh, <laughs> it's just he's he's a fantastic fighter and his fighting will get him the answers eventually. Um, so that's a problem that I've had with the Batman because he's not the world's greatest detective. But at the same time, with the Batman that we do get, our super great fighter, this movie, I think, is the best out of all of the Batman movies. Like... Because this is the Batman we have. He's not super smart. Or at least not the greatest smart man. He's just a puncher. He's a guy who solves problems with his fists. So he does that really well in this movie. And the, the, the Joker that they use with it. And the cinematography. And the tension that they create with Heath Ledger. Is the reason why I really enjoy this movie. Like he's not a good Batman. But he's. But this is a good movie to me. Oh, no, I still think it's a great movie. Heath Ledger seals the show, and it's the only reason why I hold this movie up so high. Because mm -hmm. he's well, the perfect Joker. Yeah. Also, um, Harvey Dent is great in this. Um, with uh, Aaron Eckert, is a great Two-Face. Um, also, Gary Oldman's a fantastic Gordon throughout the series. Mm -hmm. um, like There's people who I think play the roles perfectly. I think Gary Oldman's a perfect Gordon. Michael Caine is great. Michael Caine is fantastic as Alfred. For this version of Alfred, he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, Aaron Eckert is a great Harvey Dent because we see that kind of unhinged side occasionally, but we know that he's trying to be on the good path. Um, which is <laughs> perfect for Harvey Dent, especially when you're trying to set that up. Um, that, uh, um, uh, fuck, I'm blanking on his name. Um, I actually like Heath sorry. Ledger is a perfect Joker. Mm -hmm. Thinking about Harvey Dent, I actually got me thinking. Um, I actually feel like they messed with Harvey a little bit because, well, let me re-explain that. Like, not that they messed with him, but in this movie, they give us enough to explain that Harvey does have a strategy, and that he, like, he was called Two Face by the police, apparently. Because he was in, he was investigating them to see if they were crooked cops or not, but in this movie, um, there I feel like they give us a very, very good explanation of him. Like I don't feel like at any point he's ever really sinking towards Batman's level. Even in that one scene where Batman stops him, and like I still think that he's being better than like sure he's using intimidation tactics but the way that he has set up the situation especially because of his coin and what right we see with rachel with the coins reveal um he was never going to do anything to that guy oh yeah no so he Which was is, in control see, yes yes but you can see that there's a bit of the unhinged with him though mm -hmm. because of it like he's with like He's, he's always gotten close to that edge, right? Mm -hmm. But he had that code that he was never going to break it, which is why he was Gotham's White Knight. Mm -hmm. um, which works, and that's what his character is sort of in the comics um, at that time. He's mm -hmm. not, because he's not a crooked lawyer, he's a good lawyer who's good to people. He's got a little bit of a temper, which he has in this, mm -hmm. but he ne he never crosses that line. And in this movie, he still doesn't really cross the line until he meets the Joker. Yes. Which a similar, not the exact same incident, but the incident that causes Harvey Dent to become Two-Face in the comics is how he becomes unhinged. Mm -hmm. This is what causes him to become unhinged. Harvey Dent is Joker's one bad day theory. Mm-hmm. I like how that's not what the One Bad Day comic's about, though. <laughs> I know, but he'd be a perfect, he's a perfect example of the One, day, the bat, one bad Day theory. Mm -hmm. Like, that, the theory is that everyone's one bad day. It only takes one bad day to become the Joker. 
Yeah. Yes. I yes. I've seen that comic. Explain, I know. I'm explaining <laughs> it to other people. So that's the um. That's the uh Killing Joke comic. Yep. Um. In the movie where he shoots Barbara in the spine. I haven't seen the movie and I don't want to. I haven't heard great things about it. And what I've seen about it, I'm like, ooh. It was okay. That whole beginning just makes me unsettled. <laughs> um. But Harvey Dent is the example of that. Um. In in a way, in this movie. This is an adaptation of the killing joke, but using Harvey as the as the Gordon in that story. Mm -hmm. And instead of Gordon proving Joker wrong, Harvey proves Joker right. Mm -hmm. And I think it works for this movie because also Harvey is closer to that edge than anyone else because he because he could easily be Batman. In this movie, I hear you. They, 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 there's enough similarities between the two. Yes. Um, while Gordon, I think, even in this story, I don't think could have like the bad day story could truly make him a villain. Mm -hmm. Gordon's whole life is a bad day. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is, <laughs> and yet he's still a good guy. Mm -hmm. He sometimes bends the rules a little bit, but he's still a good guy. So, I don't know. I think that's the the thing. Um, that like that's why I like this movie. Like a lot of the characters are perfect. Mm -hmm. Batman's what holds it back. Okay. Like I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. It's it's just in this instance I'm going to be I know I'm giving this movie a higher score. Because all the other things that I love and care about are much better in this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's fine. A lot of the a lot of the reasons why, I, I my score is probably going to surprise you, but like there's so much in this movie that I love. Okay, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, but the main character is Batman. The movie is called The Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. That is who this movie is supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. And they explain so, why he's the Dark Knight at the end. Yeah, but they also explain that partly during the party mm -hmm. or during the dinner that the Dark Knight of Gotham. They talk about Batman. Yeah. You live long enough to, you know, you either die here or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Yeah. Um. So my my whole thing with it is more on that, I guess, if that makes sense. Like. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, my problem with this movie is seriously just because Batman doesn't really Batman. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that that I and that's always gonna be a running theme with Batman movies. I'm really hoping and it looks like it might hold true is that uh the Batman coming out mm -hmm. next year with, with Robert, uh, Pattinson? Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. <laughs> um every one of them you have a good Batman name by the way way. Um, you have uh, uh, Batfleck, you have Robert Battenson, Michael Batten, or Michael Keaton. Mm -hmm. Christian Bale doesn't have a great. Um, I was about to say, what's Christian Bale's? Christian Bat? He's the only one that Robert I can't Pat really do that with you e easily with. Which suit did Christian Bale get to put on, too? Like, you know, the whole Batman tradition is they get to put on the suit from a Batman before them before they put on their Batman suit. So. I'm hoping it's Clooney's. That nipple. That'd be funny. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, but like each one, like in my opinion, each one of them, like my other problem with Bale's Batman is his Bruce isn't great either. I've never liked Christian Bale's Bruce as much. You want to know why? Why? Well, I would love to know why. Feels like a net. Just bouncing off of lights, like. No, I feel like. Bruce Wayne comes off as too much of an act. Oh, okay. Okay. Which is part of what it's supposed to be, but it's not supposed to be so fucking obvious. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, it's blatantly an act in these. I feel like it's kind of believable. Like, okay. Only in, because in he's with Rachel mm -hmm. in the first two movies, mm -hmm. you know that they know it's an act. At least them two, yes. 
which ruins it for me. Yeah. Because it, uh, the entire time, I know it's an act. I want to know it's an act without being shown it's an act, if that makes sense. I hear you, yeah. Because that was to make, makes Bruce Wayne so interesting. Because they're just making why faces Michael at each Keen's other. Why Michael so great? Which is why Mask of the Phantasm is so great. Um, the animated movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's why so many other Batman adaptations, I think, do great with Bruce Wayne. You need to make sure you have the proper balance, which is why I liked um, Bruce Wayne in um, Batman v Superman. Mm -hmm. I actually praised that, like that whole scene, like he feels like Bruce Wayne at the party and stuff like that being who he is, right? But that scene where like you have that moment where he's got to break the act to talk to Clark Kent. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it's supposed to be. Bruce is supposed to be kind of always that like on that edge of just being Batman all the time. Because, in these like, movies, it just feels like it's Christian Bale acting like a playboy. See, the problem I have is they never establish who Bruce Wayne really is. Like, because the whole time they've never, like, like, we don't get to see really any Bruce Wayne time. We have a lot, like, let me rephrase that. We get the beginning of the first movie is a lot of Bruce Wayne time. But then after that point, when he's trying to establish the Batman, there is no Bruce Wayne. Like, well, there is. Yes and no. Well, at the parties, yes, but that's the like the only time we as moviegoers get to see him as Bruce Wayne is when he's supposed to be pretending to be Bruce Wayne. Like, yes. So, like, I hear and what that's you're my saying. Problem. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. But the reason I have a problem with it is because we never really establish who Bruce Wayne, even as the fake, is. Like, who he is even as a fake person. Because they're just like, what can we do? Well, we can do this because it seems funny, so. That's my problem with it. It's <laughs> There's more you can do with Bruce Wayne. Because, <laughs> like, Batfleck does it better. There's the scenes with him and Alfred. Mm -hmm. Where he's talking about, you know, the, the history and stuff like that. Where they talk about all of that. And it works. Because you see that... Bruce Wayne and the Batman are one and the same mm -hmm. when they're not having to wear one of the other masks. I mean, you're not wrong, I guess. Like, I just, I feel like we're going to keep saying this, like, once again, I feel like we're going to keep kind of repeating what we're saying now, which is oh, Batman's no, not a great Batman, but everyone yeah. else is fine. And then we'll everyone go into a different perfect. specific about why Batman's not a great Batman, but everyone else is great. <laughs> oh, we're going to get into it more in the next one. See, I and just... Okay, in the next one, I think he's a better Batman. Okay, because once we get into spoiler... Like, we saw a whole spoiler section, and that's going to cover we're, all we, three all right, of these we're gonna, movies. We're, yeah, so. we're going to need a quick up. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, popcorns? Popcorn. All right. Um, I'm giving this movie an eight and a half. I like it's almost a nine to me, not quite. I'm exactly where you are. <laughs> really? Okay. Yes, I'm exactly where you are. I'm like it's like it's a it's like I want to give it a nine, but my problems with Batman mm -hmm. hold it back every time. Mm -hmm. So that's why. All right. We on to the Batman uh, Dark, or the Dark Knight Rises. The Dark. Um, oh, I forgot. Hang on one second. Anybody uh, have any questions while I do yeah, something real fun. quick? Um, uh, I, 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 I need filler. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. Go, moving on to the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> Did you forget to set up the scene? Uh, no. I, uh -huh. Not at all. <laughs> uh, released July 20th, 2012 um, with a budget of 250 million. They really upped the budget. <laughs> Opening US, 160 million. Uh, gross US, 448 million. Worldwide, one billion dollars. A little more, a little more than, than what the last one made. Last one made uh one point zero zero five billion dollars. Mm -hmm. This one made one point zero eight billion dollars. I'm getting so a call. And I'm assuming it's my stepmom who's home and forgot her keys. Take your call real quick. I, I fill the time. It's going to be like a minute or two while I go downstairs. All right. <laughs>
Um, so it made a little bit more money than the last one. Um, so by like another 80 ish million, a little under 80 ish million, like 70, 76 million more dollars. There's still a lot. That's quite a bit of money. Um, yeah, no, I, I have some thoughts on this. So I'm going to have to wait for Steven. Um, it's good in my opinion, though. I enjoy this one. Probably enjoy it more than other people probably did. But I might say that I think it's my least favorite for other reasons. I don't know. It's, it's kind of an odd one. I think he's coming back. Is that him? Hello? 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 Okay, I lied. Hello? That wasn't my stepmother who forgot her key. That was my boss doing her... This, I don't like... We had a conversation before we started because we were talking about scheduling and um, I don't like this season at my work because scheduling changes all the fucking time. Like, tomorrow I was supposed to be working at one school, a religious school, um, and I was going to be waking up at like 7 a.m. or at 5 a.m. to get there by 6 to do this. And now, just now, literally, like, if I was still going to that school, I'd be going to bed right after this podcast. But I might not be going to that school tomorrow. So, it literally changes the day before every day, and I don't like that kind of stuff. But whatever. What were you talking about while I was gone? Uh, I was talking about how it made it a little bit more and that I enjoy this one quite a bit more than I think other people did. Because mm-hmm. um, I feel like people will bash this one a lot more than it needs to be bashed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think it's my favorite. Okay. Like, <clears throat> I definitely don't think this is my favorite. Like, out of the three, I feel like every trilogy that's a decent trilogy does this. Where one's okay... Two's the best, at least it should be the best. And then three is either on par or better than one. At least I'd say one's better. In this one? Yeah, I think okay. one's the best. Okay. Like, look, the things that I enjoy are the stuff that they do with the Joker, like the cinematography and the editing. Oh, yeah, no, and, uh, and that's, like, that's, you're a sucker for that shit. Yeah, so. and that's, oh, yeah, in movie that two, that's the best that they've done this. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I agree, 100%, on that regard. <laughs> I'm looking at it as a Batman nerd. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this so. movie, I feel like it's the one point where we actually get a good investigation moment, which is literally just a throwaway line of him being like, well, I couldn't figure out who she was. Until I did these three or four other things, and then I figured out who she was. Like, yeah, they should have done more of that throughout the series. I agree with you, <laughs> because this one doesn't do that enough. Um, I would say this one also especially doesn't do that. This is the only instance, at least to me, in this movie, where he does that investigative stuff. The rest of it is just fist fighting. Yes, and this movie is eerily familiar like almost point for point plot wise the same with the first movie eh. like I'll get into specifics when we get in the spoilers but it's literally I'll boil it down for you and I'll be like well that's a little oversimplified because bliss this and this but it's essentially the same story <laughs> man I disagree I know you do the difference is Batman and what's going on with him in this story, but... Well, even then, the villain's plan is different. Is it? Yes. Kinda. It's very different. The end result's the same. Well, yeah, the end result's gonna be the same, but it's a different way to get there in the different variables. You can't you can't say the plan's the same if the end game's the same. Like I could there's a lot of similarities. No, no. The only difference is what Bane tries to do to Batman in this movie compared to what Scarecrow does to Batman in the first movie. Their plans are different. Entirely different. Their plan 
if I oversimplify it, their plan is to steal a piece of technology from Wayne Enterprises that'll interact their plan of destroying Gotham. Okay, take out the Wayne Tech part, mm -hmm. and the same problem is with all three movies. You're not wrong. Like the second movie is the mo is the most different. I feel like that's too simplified. Like it definitely is the most variety when it comes to these three stories. Like because this story and the other one are If you simplify it, yeah, it's going to be the same thing. <laughs> but you got to look at the variables and why it's different. Mm -hmm. Your complaint of doing the, people doing the same thing over and over is going to be the problem you're going to have with everything if you take it from such a simple macro view. Like what I'm getting at here because I can't really get into super specifics. Um, uh, this movie is, a, of course, like a send off for the Batman, but is also one more like final trial of him. Uh, what's going on now? Work. Ah, shut up. Work. <laughs> like this movie is Batman dealing with limitations of himself compared to the limitations of his ideals. And in the first movie, it was the limitations of like a human versus the limitations of ideals. And the difference is Batman in the first movie is first becoming Batman. Like he doesn't know what he's doing and he's doing this because he's learning and developing and whatnot. In this movie, Batman kind of knows what he needs to do realizes he can't do it and then what happens to gotham in between is the extra bit that changes the story from one to two that are one to three like uh the whole segment where batman isn't even a part of the movie which i feel is most critics complaint of this film is that batman is not in this film for most of it um but um it's that segment there that makes the first movie and second movie different because it's Batman's approach to himself and his character development is different. Um, but then, but the overall plot for the bad guys feels to me essentially the same. If we take out the fact that there's five months between the start of Bane's plan and the end of Bane's plan, where there's all this, I'm not going to call it anarchy, but it's just not, it's a failed government essentially. Um, if like that part is just to fuck with Bruce Wayne, but the ultimate goal is to get rid of Gotham. That was the plan in the first movie. And that was the plan in the third movie. The only difference is <laughs> that was the plan in the second movie. The plan in the second movie wasn't was to, to get rid of Gotham and ruin Gotham. It, it like, the difference, though, was in the second movie... You like the Joker better. Well, yes. The Bane's not a bad villain. Bane's a much better villain than Scarecrow. And almost a better villain than Ra's al Ghul. Like, that one I'd have to think about a little bit longer on. But um, with the Joker, it's not that he's just trying to completely destroy Gotham and start it anew. Like, yes he is doing he's creating anarchy in gotham but it's like it's hard to explain the difference for me like because joker was trying to take over gotham just because he wanted to because he could um uh and in the first two movies like the league of shadows is trying to destroy gotham because they feel like it is just a cesspool of evil and it needs to be reset and Joker is not trying to reset Gotham. He's trying to take it over. No, he's not trying to take it over. He's trying to reset it. When's Joker trying to take over? He essentially says in the middle of the movie, this is my town now, and you will work for me. <laughs> yeah, but he's trying to also destroy everything at the same time. Like He's, he's taking it over so he can destroy it. 
because he's anarchy. He's chaos. <laughs> yes, he is chaos. But the difference there isn't like he's not trying to seem like he's the good guy at all of this. Because no. the League of Shadows, essentially, like they don't take the credit for it, of course. But they're essentially like, yeah, we're the good guys in our story. We're trying yeah, to save the, the world. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> when in fact they're destroying it. But yes. I'm not arguing that, but I'm just saying the end goal of the Joker is the same as them. Is why I like the Joker in the story too, because he could have if if he was on a different path, he could have easily have ended up in the League of Shadows. That version of the Joker. I don't think that version of the Joker would have been in the League of Shadows, but. If he had ended up on a different path, he could have. Maybe, but we don't know. Like, sorry, I just got another work message. Okay, I'll ignore that for now. Um, because in this movie, we don't really have an origin of who the Joker is. Like, no. of, of course. So, no, no. how can we say that a different version of the Joker would join the League of Shadows? No, I'm seeing the same version in a different. Like, if 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 um, he had been reached out at a different point, maybe he could have. That's why I like about this this story is because the league works because they don't do the same thing twice. Like you say they do. Yes, their end goal is the same, but that is fine to have a same end goal. The <laughs> method to get there is different. They, like it ever so slightly different. They, they literally, no! Where did I put my note? Like, I'll go into. Okay, let me hold put, on. Grab, hang on one no. second. I can't hear you. Uh, uh, I can't hear you. Uh, uh, <laughs> What okay, were you saying? Let's hurry up so we can get to spoilers so I can explain why you're wrong. <laughs> All right, fine. So, <laughs> other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to okay. just. I'll skip this conversation for now and we'll get into spoilers then. Fine, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm going in here. Other things I want to talk about. Um, This movie made me think about all of my favorite one liners from the trilogy. Like, this isn't a car. Or. I'm not wearing hockey pads. <laughs> like, it had, this movie, these, this trilogy has some pretty silly one-liners in it, for sure. Sorry, yeah. I have to adjust my seat there. Um, other things I enjoyed. I love the first fight with Bane. Um, because it, don't get me wrong, like, this is the first real Batman v. Bane encounter that we get. We get to see that he's not the young man that he used to be. But I love how they do it so... So depressingly, like there's no music, there's no sounds other than the two beating each other up in the environment and good portions of the fight. Like, I mean, we get to see the fight happening, but we also get to see more of the reactions of people around and how they're disgusted because they know that this is not a good thing that's happening. And we don't get to see that in the other Batman movies where we get to see the reaction of what Batman's doing. Um, so that was something I thought was interesting. Um, I didn't like uh, who our ultimate bad guy was. Um, like, it makes sense. It does make sense. But that's just another part of the reason why I think it's a lot like the first movie. Um, because of who our bad guy ends up really being. And then how our main bad guy is finished at the end. Uh, Bane... Our first bad guy, sorry, not our main bad guy. Our first bad guy, Bane, how his story ends is kind of disappointing to me as well. Like, he's this big, huge force. Oh, don't get me wrong. I have issues with it. Mm -hmm. I'm just defending that it's different. I understand. I have a lot of issues with the villains in this movie. Don't worry. <laughs> a lot of it I can't explain without spoiling shit. But for me, my problem is that they don't have satisfying ends. There's not a satisfying twist um, because there's no way for you to know that that was a twist until they say it's a twist. Mm -hmm. There's no pieces for you to detect. Yeah, it's all because Batman's a bad Batman too because this yeah. whole time he's going under this preconceived notion and not putting the clues together. Yes, but there's no clues for you to put together from an, as an, from an audience perspective until it happens. There's one scene before it happens, the twist, where you can kind of go, oh, 
Maybe. Kind of two, but, but I hear what you're talking about. Well, the one is that there's a pan shot that it kind of, like, shows the person not really in peril, but they're there. Mm, I think I know what you're talking about. There's a side shot. They're kind of in the shadows, and they're looking out into the streets and seeing what's happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, that shot. Yeah. I was thinking, like, more of the back, the flashbacks and the fables. The stories tell us. Of. Oh, yeah. I mean, yes, but who that is. That twist is laid out who that is in the movie isn't laid out to you yes that is true there's no hints at that that's mm -hmm. my problem with it the twist is ha i'm that person mm -hmm. and then it's a knife yes the twist is a knife in the back <laughs> yes. my problem with that is you don't set up that person being them mm -hmm. and tell you legitimately the whole movie you you don't you can the problem with that is, if you're going to have a twist, you need to write the movie around the twist, yes. right? In a way, yes. And, yes. Remove that twist from the movie. It'd be better film. Like, I, uh, like, there's a couple things that I would change in this movie. But... At the same, like the twist being one of them and who it is, um, I would probably change Selena's story too and what she does. Agreed. Uh, She's not a strong Selena Kyle. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's not, no offense to um, Anne, Anne Hathaway. Mm -hmm. I think she does great with what the material she's given. Yeah. I just don't think she's a great Selena Kyle. I feel like she's more picked because of her body. But. Well, I think that she's a great actress in this and she does a great job with what she's given. Well, yes. My problem with it is because there's a lot of stuff with the Miranda character, mm -hmm. just replace those scenes with Selena Kyle. Mm -hmm. Actually be what she is in the comics, which is a love interest. Yes. Mm -hmm. An antagonistic love interest. Mm -hmm. That would have made this more interesting. Because their whole story just seems so rushed by the end. Mm -hmm. No, especially at the end. Like, the, the resolution we get at the end of this movie, I'm like, why? That doesn't make sense. But it just happens because, you know, movies got a movie. I, I did guess. enjoy the surprise um, Ben Mendelsohn. Oh, yes. I saw him like, ben oh, Mendes Ben Mendelsohn! Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, still, you know. Type, uh, not necessarily typecast, but kind of typecast. This was the start of it all. <laughs> you know, look at his, his uh, videography. A little bit. <laughs> no, yeah, he's absolutely always like a corporate sleaze boss man. <laughs> like he's someone who's in charge, who looks good in the soup, who's like the bad from, guy. From, so looking at it from uh, The Dark Knight Rises, uh, 2012. Uh, movies that we've watched that he's been that kind of role in Rogue One, uh, Robin Hood, mm -hmm. Ready Player One, mm -hmm. um, sort of, but not really, Captain Marvel. Yeah, sort of, but not really. I, under um, I understand what you're getting at there. <laughs> That one was more of a twist with him. Because um, they just changed the character. Yes, and I'm cool with that. Again, that's a good twist on existing material. I would have never seen that twist with the scrolls. Mm -hmm. Because I have that previous knowledge. Yeah, I see, I never expected a twist to begin with. Because I was like, oh, what were these characters that I've never well, heard of? I didn't of? expect a twist either. <laughs> but... I got a twist because I have the previous knowledge. <laughs> and you get a twist because they set it up as a twist to the fans who know the previous knowledge. Which is great. That's how you do this shit. Again, why I think Marvel's movies for comic book adaptations are how you do it. I know some people feel they're a little too formula uh, formulaed, but if the formula works and you're able to use a base formula and throw a bunch of creativity into the formula, like Tiger YTT, um, the directors for Ant-Man movies, which are fantastic, the Spider-Man movies, which are both great, um, Captain America movies, which are fantastic. Like, there's a lot of great movies because they have a good, strong formula. 
that you use with different compounds to create great movies. I hear you. And these movies are great. Don't get me wrong with the Dark Knight trilogy because of Nolan. Yes. Solely because of Nolan's able to, able to, is a fucking brilliant goddamn fucking director and writer with what he writes. But at the end of the day, I don't think these are good comic book adaptations. Mm -hmm. It's they're it, fucking fun movies. It's actually kind of funny because I saw, oddly enough, I saw a YouTube video that was uh, like a socio political analysis of movies that we grew up with. Like they were talking about how uh, the Batman in this trilogy of movies shows vigilantism at its worst, and how. Um, in this aspect, Batman, a character that many people idolize, literally just beats people up and gets yeah. the answers done. And it shows it makes people believe that they, too, can just beat people up and get the answers done. It's literally a problem that they have in the second movie that they shortly they address. address it. they, it's something that they have for one scene and that's it. Two. I guess you're not. Right. But. It has no relevance to Batman as a character. Yes. Doesn't affect the character of the movie in any way. Mm -hmm. So, like... When in reality, that would actually affect Batman in the other adaptations. Again, why I don't think these... When people say that these are the best comic book movies, I think they're more emphasis... They're more comic book movies. They're not talking about comic book movies. Now, these are good they're movies. on movies. Yeah, these are movies that are loosely based off of an origin, but it's... Okay, like, this is the most widely accepted loosely based adaptation. And this I think that's part of the problem. I think everyone comparing comic book movies to the Dark Knight trilogy are missing the point. Okay. Because this one, by the end of it, I think loses the heart of the Batman. Yeah, by the end of this, the Batman's just a strong guy. Yeah, who has smart moments, but doesn't we don't see a lot of those like and even then he doesn't really solve the problem no he doesn't so like that's even that's the point of this third movie is that the problem was solved based on a lie in the second movie so yeah and batman lies all the time in the comics it's mm -hmm. huge conflict and stuff like that but like at the core of the problem, that's resolved in a line. Legitimately, what the lie is resolved in a scene. Mm -hmm. It's never brought up again. It never affects anything going forward. Mm -hmm. It's a that's my problem. Okay, I hear you. Again, I still enjoy this movie because of great acting, great cinematography, great everything else. But strictly from an adaptation standpoint, I don't think it's as good. Okay, that was this was something I was gonna wonder. I was wondering about ever since we said we were gonna watch these movies. I was like, Dev always rates down a movie based off of its source to the origin, and this movie is widely accepted as a great movie, but a it is. terrible Batman adaptation. And I was it's, like, it's not a great Batman adaptation. Yeah. So I was wondering if you were going to put that aside or not. And I'm thankful you didn't. <laughs> no. And my score may not reflect everything I'm saying. I will say that because mm -hmm. it's still a good movie and it's enjoyable. Like, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. It's still a good movie and still enjoyable. But I have problems with the series and I've always had problems with the series. Mm -hmm. um, especially as I've gotten older and because we're more, we're in the older age and of wiser. Marvel. Well, no, we, I've got, I've seen other, I've, I've like from since then, like the, I started reading, like actually getting my hands on comics more and being able to buy my own comics after the, this movie came out, mm -hmm. after I had graduated and got a job. Mm -hmm. Cause you're an adult who actually got paychecks and actually made money and could buy comics yeah. myself. <laughs> so I started buying comics, started reading them and understood why I loved the Marvel movies so much is cause they take the characters and put them in the movie. And why I have a problem with DC movies is because they try to change too much of the character's fundamentals to fit the version of the movie, if that makes sense. 
Like they they change Batman from being the greatest detective, from being a martial arts master to being a beat ass, occasionally do something smart and nifty, and then win by the end. Okay, yeah, I hear you. I mean, you're not wrong. And I think that's my problem with it, which is why I'm looking forward to the Batman, because I think it might actually be closer to the comics. Yeah, it's, it's supposed, I think a lot of people are theorizing that it's supposed to be like Batman year one, like you mentioned earlier. Yes, it's, it's going to so. be like Batman year two more, okay. um, because he's like a, it's, a two, it's, it's like his second year as Batman. Okay. Um, which I'm fine with. That's perfect, because we already know the origin story. It doesn't look like it's going to dive too much into that. We know how the Batman starts. Um. I'm fine with having a year two Batman who's slightly established, but still very much in the shadows. That's what Keaton's Batman was. Keaton's Batman was early into his development, right? Early into his career in the first movie, but he was known, but still hidden. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone in the Gordon didn't know about him yet. Um, but the streets knew about him. Okay. That's why I like 89 Batman the most, like, so far. 89 Batman is my pinnacle Batman. Because it's got a Bruce Wayne story that makes sense with Vicky Vale. It's, like, it shows a human side. It's got a fantastic... He's fantastic Batman, and, and he's the one who started the voice. Mm -hmm. Michael Keaton chose to do that. That was him who said... Who, who went... Uh, who started to change his voice as Batman because it made sense. You're not going to talk as Bruce Wayne if you're saving the woman you're going out with. You're not going to talk like who you are. You're going to go on Batman. <laughs> I'm Michael Keaton's Batman. <clears throat> I'm totally not because the person you're having sex with. <laughs> okay. And then talk to Michael Keaton when you're Bruce. Mm -hmm. That works. He started that. He does detective work. He does. He's got awesome gadgets. And he's, he does. He's Batman in that. Christian Bale's Batman is not the best Batman, and I, I, I argue with people about it all the time. When they go like, no, Christian Bale's the best Batman. Mm -hmm. How? In what way? Because he's got the coolest movies? <laughs> he definitely has I, the coolest I can movies. I could argue he's got the best movies. 100%. He's got the best movies as Batman. Like, they're better movies than the 89 Batman. Or Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. But... That doesn't make it a better Batman movie. That's the argument I have for people. Okay. I hear you. And that's where I'll leave it for me. Okay. So, I mean, I have nothing else to say about this movie either. So, All right. Neither do I. Uh, Dev, what are your popcorns? Eight. Same. Fair enough. So, overall, rating the series, it, it would be an 8.5 overall for all three. Yeah. These are... Because two eight point five and an eight. Mm. Like I definitely, like I said, my favorite one as I rated was, um, the Dark Knight, all because of the Joker and what they've done with him. Like I actually sat there, I watched, I, I watched this movie. Like I didn't sit there and take notes and like so. I at one point put my pen down. And I was like, I'm just gonna. This is nice. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. It's a great movie, mm -hmm. but. Okay. Again, I have problems with it. I hear you. All right, so let's get into spoilers. Spoiler! Right here, it's Dark Knight Trilogy. So do you want me to break down my points, why the first one and the third one are basically the same? Okay, go for it, okay. and I will debunk you. I understand. So first movie starts, essentially, with us having our bad guy of Scarecrow doing yes. his thing. Uh, well, actually, technically, this movie starts with our bad guy of Filoni. Uh, well, technically, it starts with our move bad guy starting with Chill. But <laughs> um, ultimately... Our bad guy's not Chill. Chill's never the quote-unquote bad guy. Yeah, Mr. Chill is our starting force. Mr. Chill was sent, apparently, because of Falcone. Um, no, he was never sent. Le okay, let me explain what happened. Like, the, the way it's... The way I got it in this movie, before you interrupt me again, I'm just kidding, uh, <laughs> uh, is the way it was explained was that everything happens because of Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul is in charge of every single thing of this uh, from the very beginning. 
So um, he sends Scarecrow to go and start uh, preparing his drugs and whatnot for Gotham. Um, Scarecrow is working alongside with Falcone because Falcone is the one smuggling in the drugs and whatnot. Falcone is the bo- essentially the crime boss of Gotham. He's in charge of everything. He, like people, including the s- officials of the city, respond to him and what's going on. Yes. So, like, nothing happens without his, without his knowledge. Mr. Chill, while technically wasn't sent by Falcone, was, um, was essentially the go-to person the way it was explained was like because in the courts we're talking about how falcone was the one who was ultimately responsible like mr chill mr chill is working with falcone in some way because he was killed by falcone's hitman because he was because you missed a key detail sure go ahead they shared a cell together that's why chilled's getting off of it getting a lighter sentence through the DA mm-hmm. because they shared a cell and he has info on Falcone okay. now. Like, but that's still the not why he murdered the mm-hmm. Waynes is because he was broke mm-hmm. because of the depression, because... which was caused by Raza Ghoul. Yes. And so he was spent to that desperation, saw a rich couple, mm-hmm. tried to rob them. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then the jail cell he was sent to after that, when he was caught, was shared with Falcone when Falcone was in jail. Mm hmm. Okay, but that, still, that's so he got in. Okay, but that's just the beginning of this movie. So that's that's why not Falcone the part. T- t- took out, mm-hmm. chilled. Okay, but I understand that. I uh, thank you for clearing that up. But that's not okay. the part that I was really trying to get into. I know, I know. I'm just <laughs> explaining okay. that because it's a key detail that you missed. Okay, now, what happens is essentially our main bad guy in the first movie is Scarecrow, where he is setting up this situation and then going to this place to set up the water flow. And then he's testing with his drugs and experimenting with this at the psychology place. Um, And at the end of the, um, we find out that his whole plan is to poison the water with the stuff that has to be vaporized by the water machine to then make everybody become fear induced when the train goes by. Sorry. I just smacked the mic. Um, Um, Ra's al Ghul's whole thing is he's trying to destroy Gotham. The way he's doing that is he steals the EMH, the the electronic microwave thing that was created by Wayne Industries to um, to vaporize the water so the thing can become an inhaler and everyone goes crazy. Um, and the day is solved because um, Scarecrow doesn't realize that Ra's al Ghul's just going for destruction. Um, and when Scarecrow's going around kind of being crazy, he gets tased and he just fucks off. And that's the end of Scarecrow. We don't see him again. And then we have Ra's al Ghul and the Batman finish their story with the fight and whatnot. Um, and the Batman not killing him. Yeah. Um, but but, yeah, (laughs) but not saving him either. (laughs) Manslaughter. Yeah. So he committed manslaughter. (laughs) Mm -hmm. so this movie (laughs) this movie is essentially Bane coming in being the bad guy being the enigma force hi LaBelle I know that wasn't a high to me but still high (laughs) Um, Bane being our main primary bad guy source in the beginning of this film he goes around he steals a piece of technology from Wayne Industries he steals a lot of technology from Wayne Industries actually um his ultimate plan at the end of the day is to cause the city to essentially destroy itself until he blows it up. And the ultimate end goal is to stop the person before it blows up. Um, what ends up happening is that Bane gets shot once and is dead. So fucks off for the rest of the film. And so that problem is solved right away. Then we have our surprise Al Ghul who's actually the boss in charge, who is planning this whole thing from the beginning. And that Al Ghul is killed. Hi, LaBelle. Thanks for saying hi to me. I appreciate that. Um, What I'm getting at is essentially point A is start the terror. Point B, steal the machine. Point C, continue the plan. Point E, use the machine to start the plan. 
point, uh, I missed D, <laughs> whatever, point D, point E, um, have our first bad guy get killed. So point F, our main bad guy can be our antagonist so they can have the problem happen. Okay, <laughs> second movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, to explain it like you've been. Yes. Joker, our main villain mm -hmm. in the second movie. His plan to kill the Batman mm -hmm. by... Getting all the criminal organization under him for now. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, he does all that. During it, his plan is to corrupt Harvey Dent. Mm -hmm. So, to do that, kills Rachel. And steals something of Wayne's. Mm -hmm. The people he cares about. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then... While he's doing his big plan, Harvey Dent is really doing his own plan. Okay? Mm -hmm. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Now Harvey Dent is the twist villain. Mm -hmm. But he's not he's the main villain. But, no. Sorry, go ahead. I interfered. I'm sorry. Joker is, inter is incapacitated, like the other two movies. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, new, the, the main villain, the main character, we shall say, who's only the villain part with, uh, towards the end mm -hmm. is now the villain of the story mm -hmm. and gets killed off. <laughs> like you're not wrong if there. You look at things from a macro perspective. Mm -hmm. These three have the same problem. The well, same thing. Like you're not wrong there, but there's the specifics in between. Like you're looking at it still from a macro scale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because their plans are different in mm -hmm. the first movie and the third movie. Okay? Mm -hmm. The plan in the, th the first movie is get the toxin in the water main, mm -hmm. turn the water main into gas. Mm -hmm. By the way, Scarecrow's in on the plan. Like, he's in on the plan, yes, to put, like, to spread the fear into the air. But he wasn't, they said, Ra's al Ghul said that Scarecrow didn't realize that he was essentially just trying to destroy Gotham. Like, there was I mean, something in was, there. What, where, what was Jericho thinking was going to happen? I can't remember, but I believe he thought that he was going to be the king of Gotham when no, Ra's al Ghul's he plan. He was trying to make everyone, like, crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, there was definitely, they had mentioned that Scarecrow didn't know Ra's al Ghul's full plan. It was a line in this movie. No, no one ever knows the full plan. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, Scarecrow knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. He knows the toxin, so he knows what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. He'll know that the whole city goes crazy, and then he'll take control. <laughs> but no, he won't take control. He's the whole city's crazy and going to kill itself. He knows that's exactly what's going to happen because he knows the toxin. Anyway, I'm pretty sure he said that he was going to take control too. Of it. I don't. Well, I don't remember him saying later. that. Yeah, I was about to say I don't remember that part specifically, but we'll go on from there. Okay. <laughs> so, and he gets taken out by the train. Okay. Mm -hmm. The difference is with the other plan is A, Bane actually incapacitates the Batman. Mm -hmm. Which Roz didn't. Mm -hmm. Failed. B, the fact that his organization, we see that they're digging something, right? The plan of stealing the tumblers is a smart plan. It's a different plan. It actually arms them. Against the Batman. Mm -hmm. Against Gotham. S throwing uh, C4 in a ring around Gotham to get all of Gotham's cops into the sewers at the same time. And then blow the ring. Mm -hmm. Trapping the cops. Creating anarchy in the city. Okay? Mm -hmm. In the sense of there's no longer the authority. I mean, Madness Gas would do the same thing. Yeah, but the plan was to blow up the water main in the main central area, mm -hmm. right? And this one, instead of blowing up the water main, is blowing up the entire city. Instead, just cold nuking it. Yes, but the problem is you still have survivors in the first plan. Kind of, but yeah. You're not wrong, yes. They would be survivors. This one? Mm -hmm. There's no survivors. Because mm -hmm. no it's a little more extreme. Yes, and it's a different plan. The nuke! Nuke and fear gas are not the same! And B, C, D, where am I? 
I don't remember. <laughs> Alphabets are hard. And number Q. <laughs> number Q. <laughs> um, Bane's tact, like, what his plan and goal is different. He plans to break the bat. Roz didn't plan to break the bat. Because the difference is Bane was taking it personally in this instance. While no, Roz was Talia. not. Talia. Talia was taking it personally and Bane is in love with Talia. So, if, like, he's her protector. Like, it's yes. personal. <laughs> yes. But. The other thing, too, is. Like. The whole money part to it as well. You it, you cripple Batman's money. Mm -hmm. But they, Batman they... in this movie didn't need money. Like, yes, Bruce Wayne doesn't have any money. And that's why the idea was Dak, Dak it was going to dock it, Dak it, tack it, whatever Dak it is. It. Dak it. The, the thought was, if Bruce Wayne doesn't have money, Dak it can take over Wayne Enterprises. Well, at least that's what his plan was. But... As Batman in this movie, it doesn't matter that Batman doesn't have any money. That Bruce Wayne doesn't have any money. Again, <laughs> I'm I'm still getting to the plan. Okay. Sorry. So they can get... Because in the previous one, they just stole off a ship, okay? Mm -hmm. Anyone could do that. Stealing off of a ship when you're the League of Shadows isn't that hard. Being one of three people to get in the room... Of the nuke. Three people. Mm -hmm. Who are in that room. <laughs> now that takes planning. Mm -hmm. Skill. Deception. And chaos. Because you rob Wall Street. You steal all of Wayne's money. I... I've make it so he has to go to Talia. Talia has to invest in the company now, giving her assets to the nuke. Like the difference. It's not a nuke yet. I was about to say in the, the, the beginning though, like, yes, um, the whole thing is Talia slowly using whatever it is, her, whatever money she ends up getting. I don't know how she gets money, but she has money. Leave shadows. Yes, she League has League Shadows. of Shadows money. And then using that League of Shadows money, she, as a citizen of Gotham, donates into the Wayne Project for this nuclear power energy fund. It's not fusion nuclear, reactor. but it's, yeah. It's, it's nuclear, it's fusion reactor. Yeah. So it's Wayne Enterprises and her making this clean energy source before she takes control of the company. Yes, it's part of her plan to get control of the company eventually, using Bane and whatnot. But... At the same time, like, this is a slow plan, but you also, in the first movie, Ra's al Ghul says, we have infiltrated every part of your government. Like, they have somebody everywhere. So, this is a slow plan that's been taking forever with them, too. Like, this is something that they've been doing months in the first movie when they're dumping water in the water main, so all of the city's water is polluted. Like, literally well, all that, of it. <laughs> but it's more calculated in this sense. No one, like, until Batman shows up, no one's, pl the plan would have been the same. Batman expedites that process by showing up. I don't think the plan would have been the same in this movie without Batman. No, exactly. Batman is the plan in this movie. The whole plan circles around Batman. Like, because I, th yes, you're not wrong. Like, that's the personal part. That's Bane taking it personally, and that's why he's making him watch as Batman as he destroys Gotham. Like he says that I'll make you watch Gotham, I'll break your spirit, and then I'll let you die. Um, but <laughs> ultimately, like they said it, he doesn't care what happens to Gotham. It, he wants it to blow up. He's just playing this monthly game, this five month long game to fuck with Batman. And eh. but if you get rid of Batman. The ultimate plan is I'm going to take this nuke and blow up the town. It's the same with if but you get rid if of you Batman. Take out Batman, then the, first, the Gotham's already destroyed by the fear toxin. You're not wrong. Yes. But if you take out Batman in the first movie, the fear toxin takes over the city. If you take out yeah. Batman in this, the bomb still freaking blows up. Yes. <laughs> but 
the, the whole plan revolves around Batman. Mm-hmm. The whole reason they do this is because of Batman. Like, you're not wrong. Like, they do it because they're trying to break Batman. But they're still the League of Shadows. Yeah, but they're still just the League of Shadows trying to destroy Gotham and reset the city or the planet. Which would have been done in the first bit movie without Batman. So, like, I. How do you take Batman out of this movie? They did it themselves. <laughs> like, what I'm getting at, I don't know. Like, I don't even know what we're arguing anymore, if I'm being honest. I don't know what honest. you're trying to argue right now. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to argue because you're trying to say that you take out the Batman from this movie. You don't take out the Batman That's from this not movie. what I'm... No. <laughs> I know, I know, but you're trying to argue that the plan would still be the same as the other movie. My point being is, no, it's not. The whole plan revolves around torturing Bruce. And destroying Gotham. Mm-hmm. Because it would torture Bruce. Uh, like, I don't agree with you, but I don't have anything to say that's going to progress this conversation. Fair enough. <laughs> that's, I feel like I keep having that problem with every conversation I have. I don't agree with you, but I don't have the words to make you change what you're saying. So, like, because the way, like, of, you may say I'm oversimplifying it, which is exactly what I said in the beginning is when I'm opening up into the macro verse, but it does feel essentially like the exact same plan. It's just the only difference is they add a couple of months of torture. That just seems too simple for what the movie does. Like, from, from looking at it from that view, you miss the nuance, the intent, and the, the like, struggle that happens because of the plan. Like, that's like, that's like looking at, they make the comparison, okay? <laughs> that's like looking at um, Endgame and Infinity, Infinity War, zooming out and being like, the plan is Thanos wants to get the stones to destroy them. See, I wouldn't even simplify that movie that much. <laughs> like, I'll be honest. If you're simplifying the villain's plan, it's the same thing. No, yes. Right? But I, like, there's a degree that I think you're going past that I'm going. Like, I know, but that's what it feels like to me. I hear you. Yeah. See, that's, that's why I'm the critic. It's like a fine wine. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's like a fucking flat beer. <laughs> That's what movie critiquing is. It's like, hmm, I taste some hints of nuts and some fruit and a lot of bullshit. <laughs> I'm hearing your critiquing going like, someone left this out too long. <laughs> well, gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have personality complex issues. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um... um talking about a side thing i don't really care for i think give blake a suit if what give blake a suit i was thinking about this <clears throat> because where this movie leaves off they hint at um batman what's the one with old bruce wayne beyond yes they hit towards a batman beyond storyline no i feel they hint more at a uh out of Batman and Robin? No. Blue, but yes and no. Like, the only reason I say yes to that is because he's an adult working for the police. The reason I say no to that is that character grew up with the ideals of Batman and developed into that crime fighter I'm not Nightwing. saying it's good <laughs> listen i'm not def- i'm not gonna argue with you on that because <laughs> you're right but from my perspective this is more what they hinted at like i hear you like i definitely got that they're trying to set up a nightwing slash robin slash whatever but 
every other part of the story is Batman's too old to take care of himself anymore, and every other old Batman story leads to, you know, him either being in a mech suit, which we've already seen, or replacing Not himself. This point, <laughs> yeah, not yet. with this franchise, but <laughs> or both. Mm -hmm. Um. So again, why I said this is what they're hinting at. They were hinting at a Nightwing. Or a Nightwing-esque <laughs> character. So oh, I forgot to grab that. That or an Azazel. I'm going to make this things look terrible for a second. Sorry, one second, because I did a dumb and forgot to grab stuff. Yep, take me there. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> uh, opening that one news? as well. Yep, we still have news. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> hey, you like doing the three movie long ones, right? I want to watch the boys tonight. All right. We're, <laughs> we're fine. We're done. Are you happy? I'm just kidding. Is there anything else spoilery specific that you want to talk about in this? No, I just feel like the whole Robin stuff was just bullshit. Mm -hmm. at the yeah. end. I feel that line was so dumb. You should use your old name. Robin. Robin. Yeah. <laughs> like, Fuck you! <laughs> yeah, that was never his name in the comics. Never. That's such a misunderstood, like, use of that, and I'm very upset of it. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that was terrible. The, and also the Selena Kyle romance at the end. Made yeah. no sense. Like, don't get me wrong. Sh Selena Kyle and Batman kind of have this touch-and-go relationship forming in the movie, but it never gets to the part where I actively believe that they love each, like they like each other. So agreed. But yet yeah, the, they're living together at the end of the film, according to Alfred's perspective. So I still don't like Alfred's whole plot in this feels weird too. Yeah, Alfred in this movie I both like and don't like because his demeanor changes between these three films, which I make, it makes sense. It's been what thirteen years between the first time they donned yeah. the suit and the last time. But it feels like a big change based on how little screen time Alfred gets. Yes. Also agree. So. Uh, I guess that's it. I have nothing else to say. Yeah. We're in the news. The wrap up. Fun stuff. So um, I'm going to just plow through some of these real fast. I actually, I'm changing this because I actually pulled up the news article this time. I'm using the slide like I'm supposed to. Yay. According this is to, great news. Yeah. According to comicbooks.news, Henry Cavill has decided to sign up for three more movie deals um, as the Superman. The Superman. Our Man of Steel. Uh, it, this also comes with uh, news that Ben Affleck has signed a new deal for Batman as well. So... Which is great news, because mm -hmm. I think mean, those two are good as their characters. I just feel like their versions of the characters were written poorly. Yes. <clears throat> it says here, it said, uh, it said that due to the Snyder Cut, interest in Henry Cavill has been, re as Superman has been rekindled, and Cavill has, and that Cavill helped with the pitch for a new Superman project, which was widely praised by the Warner Brothers, which has led uh, to his new contract. Uh, it claims uh, the new Superman contract includes three films and an option for future cameos and other DC films, but it's unknown to what those films currently are, but it's said to be a grand total of about five or six movies. One of them is uh, Shazam 2 or Black Adam, which is where they think that they'll see Henry Cavill. Well, yeah, we'll see him in Shazam 2. Mm -hmm. Or even we'll Aquaman see him... 2. <laughs> well, Shazam 2, because we'll see him and Shazam team up against Black Adam. Mm -hmm. We'll see Clark Kent reporting on um, young Billy Batson's story. So, so yeah, I'm just interested because they're, I think they actually did have to do some reshoots for the Snyder Cut. I'm not sure. That could just be something I've made up. I'm not 100%. So I could I see. I mean, did you see some of the mess mustache cuts? <laughs> there needs to be some recuts. Yeah, maybe. So I think that's part of the reason. Like, they wanted to make the Snyder Cut actually the Snyder Cut, so they did reshoots for it. But then they're like, oh, we can go on from there. So that's some good good news in the DC universe. 
But also we have some bad news, specifically about DC Universe. Um, you know that DC streaming platform that existed? Um, well, this has been this has been known for a while that this was going to happen. Yeah, this article came out three days ago from Nerdist, saying that at this point it has finally happened that they are no longer using DC Universe as a video streaming platform, and it'll only be comics. So, no more movies, no more TV shows, just comics. So, <clears throat> I mean, this like, was gonna happen. Like, like we, everyone said, knew. It. Yeah, it's the same thing. Why people think uh, Rooster Teeth is gonna go the same way? Really? Because they're owned by Warner. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can put all your animation and shows over there. I mean, I can kind of see it. Is over there. Yeah, Jen Locke's already moved to, like, Cartoon Network and things. Isn't HBO doing the Halo series? I don't know on that one, actually. Though, I do feel like the animation style used for Jen Locke and for Ruby has been taken in a lot of recent animations. So I could, I've been wondering that. I was like, is, is, is Rooster Teeth animations behind this? Is, because they look kind of similar lately from some of the Warner stuff that I've been seeing, so. Um... But that's a whole different story we can talk about sometime. Let me look into this real quick. Okay. Oh, Showtime's doing it. Okay. So, Showtime under Warner? Uh, I'm going to say yes, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know all the ins and outs of CBS. Corporates. Oh. Hmm. Things are confusing there. <laughs> I, 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 does CBS own Warner? <laughs> Let's no. move on, though, to our next topic. So, goodbye to DC Universe. Um, we're going to talk about what a digital. So, this is an article from TheGuardian.com. Um, Lord of the Rings special effects company, What a Digital, has launched an inquiry into toxic workplace environment claims. Where it says former staff allege Weta of bullying sexism and even sharing pornography while at work through like work emails and things so um you can get into this a little bit but it's it's gone to the point like even executives of this company including director peter jackson his wife fran welsh and screenwriter philippa boynes um was ordered by these people they're like it, um, it's a lo it's a love mong investigation by local television uh, tv and z that found complaints have been ignored by other senior management staff and long-standing issues raised by the staff has been covered up it uh, this company has been described as the world's most beautiful toxic waste dump uh -huh. oh Oh, there's a quote here. There was a tradition at the time called Porn Fridays. Every Friday, staff members would email around porn images to the whole team. A female former Weta employee told TVNZ, The first uh, Friday I worked there, I was so surprised, intimidated, and uncomfortable. I could, I could opt out of receiving them, which I did. You could opt out of receiving the emails, which I did do. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, don't be a perv people all have the same rights um stop thinking about yourself start thinking about others there's that and my last story from sausageroll.com.au <laughs> the t-shirt right will be replacing chadwick boseman and black panther 2 oh well uh, there was another story that i missed but whatever um, so as everyone knows, our beloved, the late Chad Vic Bozeman has passed away. Our Black Panther is sadly no longer with us, but according to this, um, his sister, Shuri, will be played by Letitia White, will be becoming the next Black Panther in Black Panther 2. Kind of what we all figured would probably be the path. Yeah. I'm not surprised. But I'm curious to, as to what this changes. Like, how this changes the Marvel formula and their plans for the next couple of years. But that's just something I had. Um, and speaking of Batman, I don't have an article for this one. 
but I just remember this. Um, the Batman has started filming again. And, um, they took their two weeks off. It was later reported, like last week I said that it was confirmed that um, Robert Pattinson did have coronavirus. But according to other articles, it was never confirmed. So, yeah. So, it, it's still up in the air. Like some, there were people who did have COVID-19 on the shooting, on the set. Um, yes. But now they're back to filming two weeks later. And I did state that it's, I'm not going to trust one random source mm -hmm. as to being the truth. No, I hear you. So you're not wrong. I mean, most of what I say is speculation half the time. <laughs> half uh, of what I say movies? is a lie. So yeah, next week's movies. Uh, you want to give it to us, Steph? Prince of Persia, because it's game week, and Battleship. Yeah. What makes you think that a board game like Battleship would be... Nothing. Same. Glad we're on the same page. <laughs> this could be fun. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, though, that being said... People can think of a million stories. Like, I remember in middle school, I wrote a book about the Candyland board game and how to turn that into a movie slash a story. And it's all That's easy to turn into a story, though. Yeah, it's an adventure from A to B, and you have all these obstacles to get through. I was like, oh, it's an easy And there's story. a bunch of colorful characters. Yeah. <laughs> this Battleship. Is Battleship. Oh, man. A4, you suck my battleship. Meh. <laughs> And they made that a movie. Minecraft. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not this. It's not relevant right now and critically casual and Minecrafting. Though I do love Shut that. up. <laughs> okay. I'm going to watch Boys Season 1. <laughs> Are you still going to do the watch party? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, anybody who's watching this, uh, Dev is doing a watch party of the Boys Season 1 on this channel. He's been doing it Fridays and I guess Mondays on occasion. Oh, I've been doing Monday and Friday. Oh, okay. So cool. I started last Monday. Oh, I thought you started last Friday. No. Crazy. It's, I said after last week's show that I was doing. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> go get some sleep. Nah, we, we need, we should talk more after this. Or at least, unless you don't want to talk anymore, but. We don't have talk. to talk tonight. If you want to post that. Off talk tonight. about talking after this. Okay. We'll schedule our talk about talking. We've just scheduled our talk about talking after this. So then we could talk about what we wanted to talk about later. End the show! Do you want to travel back through time or travel forward? Like the, all right, we're done here. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. I'll see you. We'll see you next week for the first battleship. Bye.